Okay, let's look at example 13.4. Uh, we're going to see this configuration again in the future in chapter 14 or 15, dealing with work and energy or conservation of energy, I think. Um, I often put that version on a test also. So let's get familiar with it. Um, we have a mass, it's 2 kilograms, it's up here at A, and it's going to fall down to some position at B, which they give us is 1 meter down. Um, they tell us the spring is unstretched initially, and that unstretched length is 0.75 meters, and they give us the spring constant, uh, 3 newtons per meter. By Hooke's law, the force of a spring is minus kx, where x is the distance it's displaced, and k is the spring constant, and minus gives us the fact that it's in the opposite direction. So if you go off a free body diagram, don't put a minus minus, just put the, the spring force in the direction that it's pointing. And call it positive or minus. Um, I'm going to do plus and plus in the positive in the right and up directions. The book I believe calls down positive. Alright, so they want to know the acceleration and the normal force on the collar. Um, when it gets down here, this spring is going to be causing some force on the collar where the collar is trying to move to the right and the rod is pushing against the collar to keep it from moving. Alright, so we start all these off with free body diagrams. This is going to be an arbitrary position on the, the pole that it's sliding down. Um, automatically, I usually do mass times acceleration due to gravity. We have this uh, normal force that we're concerned about. We also have the force of a spring, and it's up at some angle but we can break it into x and y components that are perpendicular to each other. Okay, let's start by summing the forces in the x direction. That would be mass times acceleration in the x direction. And we know that this is fixed to move up and down, so this is going to go to zero. What do we have? Um, we do have a f cosine theta, if this is our theta. So f cosine theta, and it's in the positive direction, and a minus normal force. Let's call this a normal force at C. Let's just call it the normal force. Okay, um, that all equals zero. So we find out that the normal force is equal to Fs cosine theta, but we don't know what Fs is, we don't know what theta is. We can find theta from geometry though. Theta would be this angle. <clears throat> okay, so let's hold on to that. Um, if you sum the forces in one direction and need some, some more information, uh, typically sum the forces in the second direction or third direction. Um, in the y direction, I have a minus mg pointed down, and in the up direction, I have a positive spring force times the sine of theta. That equals the mass 2 times the acceleration in the y direction. Alright, we can call this equation number 2. Um, the only thing we need to do now is a little bit of geometry. So when y is equal to 1, we have a triangle like this. This distance does not change. It's 0.75. And we can say that the stretch is going to be equal to the difference, so we'll call the stretch S, we can say 
this is um we'll call it CB like the book does right now um, and this is some point A S is going to be equal to this length CB when it's totally stretched this is your spring minus the distance AB the distance that it wasn't stretched so even if it was if it was stretched initially we would still get the amount of stretch in that fashion. Okay, um, well, CB would be equal to the square root of Y squared, which is 1 in our case, plus 0.75. Still 1 plus 0.75 squared. And then AB we know is 0.75. So we get a S equal to 0.5 meters and that is the amount of stretch that the spring undergoes all right um we know that the force of a spring is also equal to that spring constant times that delta s however much it's stretched we were given the constant as 0.3 newtons per meter the stretch is 0.5 meters the meters cancel giving us back 1.5 newtons and that's the force that the spring is supplying at y is equal to 1. okay now um, we just need the angle and we can figure it all out um, the angle would be using tangent theta so Saka toa um, opposite over adjacent, the opposite would be the 1, the adjacent would be the 0.75, I'll give us this angle or this angle, same thing, and turns out theta is equal to 53.1 degrees, so using these two we can go back into that equation, find out what the normal force is, gives me a normal force of uh, 0.9 newtons and then we can also plug theta in and get our acceleration because we also know the spring force there too and we get an acceleration equal to a negative 9.21 meters per second squared that means it's going down 